You know what? This is exciting. Uh, I think intersexual dynamics is one of the most fascinating subjects in the world and actually seeing it put into place rather than theory, just to see people go out and have these conversations. Uh, also, uh, this art is being lost. The art of meeting people in real life and then actually going on dates with them versus everything else being virtual or, you know, matchmakers, dating apps, Instagram, whatever. So this is a, this is a lost art. So it's really interesting to see um, how this whole thing's going to end up. Yeah, because everybody that I've had on the show when they go on the speed date, everybody says they've never done it before. Yeah. So it's all online now. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, and I think a lot of kids too, aren't they scared? And well, kids, like younger people, when they're in bars, they say it's kind of creepy if people approach them. I'm like, but isn't that the best way? You know, it's so funny. I like, uh, I'm, I'm 46. So yeah. I, I didn't get an iPhone until I was, what, 30 years old? Yeah. Uh, and, and so before that, the idea of like going to a bar and girls just being stuck on their phone, that didn't exist. Yeah. In fact, there wasn't even text messaging really in the US before 04. And so when you think about that time, you know, for me going out all the time, say it's from like 96 to 2006, uh, that was, it was a very different time. You would yeah. go out to bars and you would see the most beautiful women you'd ever seen at a bar, especially yeah. in Los Angeles. And then once social media came out, it made it a lot harder. And so I think um, there's, a, there's a great statistic, um, and I believe the GSS came out with this, where it shows from 2008 to 2018, the number of sexless men just like goes up 50, 60, yeah, 70%. Yeah, I've seen that, it's wild. And, and the reason why, I know some people try to say it's because of housing prices, that's not the reason why. The reason why is because of the iPhone. It's because people, what happened was a small group of men started having incredible success with women on social media. You know, you have a lot of social, you, you yeah. have women throwing themselves at you all the time. Uh, a, a small group of men started having massive success, almost yeah. like the Dan Bilzerian effect, and then a large group of men started getting left behind. So that guy who was a seven in Wichita who would have married the seven, that seven is now being pulled to a party in Los Angeles yeah. and he never gets to meet her. So that's, yeah. what's, that's what's changed. A lot of these guys give up too, I feel like as well, because I've met guys that are like, oh, it's easy for you. And I'm like, dude, I go to the gym like two hours yeah. a day. Like I, I learn an instrument. Like I did all these things yeah. to make me valuable. And I think they're always looking for this pill to make it magically happen for them. I'm like, no, yeah. you could, it, it's, it's not sexy. You got to put in work. You got to yeah. go to the gym, build your career, become interesting, like focus on yourself and that will attract people. Yeah. General Patton used to say the enemy gets a vote too. What, yeah. what, what you're, what these guys are doing is they're not considering the opposite sex. Of and course. What yeah. They would want. Yeah. Right. And the other thing that's really interesting is whenever I describe my you know, my theory and my, my strategies uh, for dating, a lot of guys are like, yeah, well that works for you because you know, every girl in the city. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's part of my strategy. Yeah. There's a way. So when you and I were growing up, probably the, the most famous people in the world are like Tom Cruise, you know what I'm saying? Tom Hanks, like there's this high level of fame, Michael Jordan. Oh, and, then, yeah. and then, and then, and then that was it. There wasn't like yeah. a mid tier level of fame. It was fame. like gatekeeps. There's yes. no way you can make it. Right. In. You were, you were part of the, the Hollywood industrial complex. They made you famous because you were in Vogue or you won a Grammy award or you won an Academy award, whatever. Now it's like, there's this mid tier level of fame. Like those, like some of these fitness models, they wouldn't have been famous in the eighties. Oh, yeah. That skinny look was way more popular. And so what's happened is there's this mid-tier level of fame where you might ha only have 10,000 followers on Instagram, but every bouncer at every club knows you. When you go to the restaurants, they're all familiar with who you are. Every pretty girl in the city has at least seen your face, isn't aware of you, who you are. So instead of a 10 out of 10 of fame, you can be like a two or a three out of 10, like this yeah. local celebrity. And it's so, it's so um, possible for average guys to get that. But here's the problem, if you don't do that, you're just so left behind. Oh yeah. There's six men for every woman on dating apps now. 80% of men on dating apps are deemed below average attractiveness. The top 20% of men on dating apps get uh, get 83% of the right swipes. The yeah, top 10% get 63%. The top 40% of men on dating apps get 96% of the right swipes, which means 60% of men are, are, are swiping, are competing for 4% of women. That's how insane things have gotten. It's basically, uh, it's like uh, what Scott Galloway says, if dating was a nation, it'd be Venezuela. It'd yeah. be the most inequitable nation that it, that's possible. So learning skill sets, like getting better on social media, getting better at networking, get, like going to cooler events, throwing cooler events and getting better at talking to women in person. These are skill sets that are being lost. And as you lose, you're not just a little bit behind, you're, you're light years behind yeah. the guys at the top who are like banging your chick at the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, it's wild. It's yeah. wild has changed so much. And I feel like the... The younger generation too, they just have no confidence in themselves either because yeah. they get babied too much. Yeah, well, that, that definitely happens when you think, so I think a better way to say it, or the way I try to explain to people is as we get further and further away from a survival scenario, yeah, as more of uh, our needs are taken um, and, and taken care of by technology, as we do that, we get softer. So for instance, uh, 
as a man who had high testosterone and was very strong, he was able to do a lot of work on a farm. When 98% of the, the American population was in agriculture, big, strong men had more babies because they were able to produce more produce and then they, they could have bigger families. Yeah. As, as the guy with the glasses and the artisan and, the, and later on the, the computer programmer, as they started to generate more wealth, men with lower testosterone started having more children and the overall level of testosterone started to drop. And so you start seeing that with men. It's like, this is a very different style of man that we have today who's never killed anything, never hunted for anything, never been in a fist fight, never even bench pressed 200 pounds in his yeah. life. It's a very different individual than he just, just 40 years ago. And so as we get further and further away from the survival scenario, you start to see men not needing those hyper-masculine qualities. Well, women like some of those qualities yeah. and they're getting lost. And what's even happening that makes it even worse is that there, there's people out there giving the opposite advice. You have therapists saying you need to be hyper, um, uh, what's the word, hyper vulnerable on the first date. When you meet a girl, be vulnerable. Like I can't think of anything that would dry up a woman's vagina faster <laughs> than me trying to express like how the last three girls that cheated on me. Oh yeah. I tell, I tell guys this all, like I tell ask girls this all the time on my show. If you had someone who came on uh, and he's, you go on a date with him and he tells you his last three exes cheated on him. Do you think he's good in bed or has a micro penis? What do you think? It's like, it's just so crazy. And these guys just yap, 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 run their fucking mouth. If I got cheated on, if a girl did horrible shit to me, stole all my money, cheated on me, you would never hear me talk about oh, it. Oh, yeah. I would keep that L a secret. I mean, it's like even with me, like I'm, I'm trying to find somebody right now to help me take care of all my animals. Yeah. And I spoke to this guy and he's like, oh, do you mind if I bring my brother? He needs help. That means you get two for the price of one. Also, I'm dealing with a child custody battle right now. Oh, and then he, he left a voice message saying, oh, sorry if I can't really speak because I'm really high right now. I'm like, bro, like <laughs> you just shot yourself in the foot. But yeah, they're doing the same thing in dating, just like exactly like you're saying.